Today's video is about spying on North Korean's agricultural production. It also is satellite tutorial, so everybody can do this themselves. But before we begin, I would like to thank all my subscribers. Who is spying on North Korean's crop production? Uh, the United States and South Korea, because they want to know what is the actual agricultural production in the coming year. Environmental spying is kind of new normal. MI6 in Britain is checking uh, which countries produce too much CO2. Here I have an example uh, of a forest in Brazil. It's a rainforest. And this is a picture of 2001. And now I'll show you a picture of 2020. You can see the forest is pretty much gone. But I will quickly teach how to use EOS, the Earth Observing System. It is relatively easy. Go to their website and then uh, you will get this page if you choose crop monitoring. There are several options, but just choose crop monitoring. Press try now for free. Then you'll get this will come. And I wrote your doc because it's in North Korea and we've looked at that previous for the opium production. So I'm kind of a little bit familiar with the area, but Let's say you write Pyongyang, then you click Pyongyang, click enter, then Pyongyang will come up and then you just choose an area close by. You zoom in, click, click, click a couple of times until it's clear. As you can see, I have two fields already in the Yodok area. Uh, when you're satisfied with the area you want to see, you press add a field. And then you make a square or whatever you want and that area will then be saved as a field you will also see try now this gift and then you get a free gift and this is important don't do that too early make a couple of fields until you have a field where you think wow this would be interesting to watch then press try now and when you do that, you have to register. Uh, they ask if you're a farmer or a bank. Uh, you just pick something. And then uh, you press the button. And when you've done that, I cannot show it because I've already done it. You will get one field for free. And my free field is this, this field. Uh, you will then have this index here. Red is bad and green is good. And then you see uh, many different abbreviations. And when you click on them, it will partly explain what it is and it partly will change the field in different colors. We will quickly have a look at that. So the first one is the NDVA. It's the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. And there is a long explanation, but um, what you would like to see on your field is that it's pretty much all green. If it's not green, if it's yellow, it's not good. If it's red, it's not good. Uh, here's a close up. And if you mouse over, like I do now, but this is a picture, if you actually do it on the satellite page, you will get small numbers. And how darker the color, how worse the numbers. Like red, dark red is 0 0.05, which means it's really bad. If you move over the green area, it would typically say 0 0.75, which is not good. We would like to have a one but it's at least a little bit better. Some of the other options are the RECI, uh, Red Edge Chlorophyll Index, and that tells about the level of nitrogen. And you probably all know that nitrogen is like really important for plants. You need nitrogen and you need phosphorus and a few other things. And if you don't have that, the plants will not grow and or not grow so good and the yield will be pretty low. We also have the NDRI, uh, and that also will show us the nitrogen concentrate. Green is good, yellow is really bad. Now, if we look at this field, then we can see that uh, the potatoes they're getting this year uh, are a very poor harvest. And if we look here, we can also see it's pretty bad because we would like to see green. We have green here in the corner, and we also have green here in the corner, but the rest is sad. My video will be really, really long if I explain all the different abbreviations. But if you sign up and you click on it, it will show you what it means and how to read these things. 
I'll just give you a very quick video over how to do it and then you can study it yourself or play with it. We look here at the normalized difference moisture index and that's actually a little bit interesting because we can see again there where we had the green spot before uh, where it was kind of healthy that's also where we have the water here and then this obvious indicates that there is a reason why there is more water here and so I took the elevation map and we can see that this is the lowest point. Green is low, red is high, uh, so there is a height difference between these two and therefore we have more uh, nitrogen in this area and more water in this area because it all runs in this direction. Just to compare, I uh, looked over Denmark and I found a little red spot so I thought well let's just have a quick look at that. If we look at this field here, this, then we can see it's nicely green. We have some yellow here but that's obvious because there is a road here so that's normal and then we have a red spot. And now we're going to have a look at this red spot and we can see here that's because the topsoil has been removed. So there's just basically sand on the red and the topsoil is gone. And obvious if you remove the topsoil then also all the nitrogen, phosphor and all the other good things are gone. Uh, I then made a height profile in Google Earth. It's just relatively easy and we can see that here. And we can see it's basically just a hole two, three meters deep where somebody removed the topsoil. What can uh, North Korea do? They have a fertilizer plant. They had it for quite a long time, but it's hardly working. And if you want to read more about that, 38 North uh, website made a um, quite good analysis about it. You can see the plant here and they check it quite often and here they actually had an article about that there is a bit of smoke coming out so they may be trying it or they can see what is going on. I would definitely recommend if you're into fertilizer to read up on that. Are there other alternatives North Korea can do? Yes there are. If they would take one third of their fields and they would plant alfalfa, soybeans, black eyed beans etc, chickpeas uh, red clover, then they could fix uh, nitrogen in the ground. Uh, but since they don't have enough ground to produce food for themselves, this is of course very unlikely. However, if they would change their way of farming, they could restore the earth very quickly. It, it's not rocket science. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. Um, please subscribe. I have a lot of people that watch and a lot of them haven't subscribed. I would very much appreciate if you do that. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.